Right, right, good afternoon. Uh, I hope we're all well. Uh, you're obviously at home, uh, but everyone else is here. Let's have a look and see who's here. Hi. Hi, hi. hi. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, we are going to be talking today about um, how alkanes and alkenes can be distinguished. So I need an alkane. Can I have an alkane, please? Fantastic, that's one. Can I have another one, please? Alkane. Thank you very much. Uh, and I need some alkenes as well. Thank you very much there. That was a little bit harsh there. Freddie, fantastic. Thank you very much. So as you can see here, we've got uh, some alkanes. Uh, these have, what's the general formula of an al uh, alkane? CnH2n plus 2. CnH2n plus 2. So what that tells us is if we've got two carbons, n equals 2, therefore 2n, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 equals 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hydrogens. So, 2 carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hydrogens, fantastic. Whereas this, this is an alkene, who can tell me what the general formula is? Can anyone tell me at home? <laughs> no, obviously not, so with that in mind, what is the general formula for an alkene? CnH2n. So what that means is two carbons, 2n equals 2 <coughs> times 2 is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I think Ollie needs to self-isolate. Uh, with that in mind, we've got uh, four hydrogens. So two carbons, four hydrogen. Now, how would we describe this molecule? Any, any ideas? Yeah. We would describe it as unsaturated. What do we mean by unsaturated? Somebody help me no, out. It contains a carbon to carbon double bond. So we've used our model here to uh, generate a displayed formula of the ethane molecule. And hopefully you can see there that the molecule is uh, saturated because it only contains carbon to carbon single bonds. By contrast, we've also got here our alkene. We've drawn that as a display formula two, and we can see here that it has the carbon to carbon double bond, and therefore we describe it as unsaturated. Now, we're also gonna talk a little bit about this molecule here today, uh, which represents the molecule bromine. We talk about bromine as being a diatomic molecule because it exists in pairs. We're going to see how these chemicals react. We'll be back in just a second. For the purpose of this, so for the purpose of this demonstration, thank you, Archie. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're, we're not actually going to be looking at ethane and ethene, but we are going to be looking at an alkane and an alkene. The reason for that, ethane and ethene are both, uh, both gases, so this causes a few problems. Now, we've mentioned here about bromine. This is the bromine solution. As you can see, it's got a, a nice brown color, uh, unlike the sort of green which the, the sort of balls represent. That's largely because of chlorine. It forms a, a, a green gas. Bromine and chlorine, both in the same group of the periodic table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of this bromine solution to a sample of an alkane, I'm going to add some to a sample of an alkene, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, now, what we need to remember as we make this addition is the fact that they don't dissolve in one another. So what that means is, is that they're, they're going to form two separate layers. But we're going to give it a shake, and we're going to see if we can uh, uh, make that happen. So I've got some stoppers here that are going to, going to do that. So first of all, I'm going to start by adding half of this bromine solution to the alkane, like so. As you can see, two separate uh, layers there. The bromine sinks to the bottom. I'm going to put the stopper on the top, give that a good old shake. Fantastic. And then I'm going to add the bromine to the alkene here, like so. I'm going to give that a shake. As you can see, the two separate layers. Give it a big shake. Fantastic. And we're just going to leave that for a second, and we're going to see what happens. So are we ready? Yeah. Or have you been recording all that time? Yeah. Or we can sort that out in the end. Okay, so with this in mind, fantastic. Welcome back. Obviously we've left this now for a couple of moments and what we can see here is the alkane has not reacted at all. There's no reaction there. The solution or the bromine solution keeps its characteristic brown color. Now that's a bit of a trick. There is a reaction that's happening here, but it's happening really, really slowly. We're going to come back to this test tube uh, at the conclusion of the week in the, in the lesson that we have next time, and we're going to see what's happened to this. Now, in order for this reaction to happen, we need to leave it in direct sunlight. 
The alkene, however, you can see has reacted and the bromine color has completely disappeared. Now, we need to think about what's happening here and we need to use our molecular models of the uh, alkane, oh, sorry, alkene and the bromine to explain what's happening. So, let's open the floor to a few questions. What can we say about the strength of the bonds in the alkane compared to the alkene? Freddie, yeah? The alkene is much stronger. The alkene has stronger bonds, do you think? Yeah. Let's just think about the thickness of this bond and the length of this bond in comparison to all the others. What do we think? Yeah. Um, and they're kind of separately, they're weaker than the single bond. Absolutely. So what we need to recognize is because this purple bond, which is representing one of the double bonds within the double bond, is longer and thinner, it's actually a weaker bond. So what that means is when the bromine collides with it, it causes the bond to break, like so. And the bromine molecule then breaks, like so, and these two materials then attach to one another. Now as you can see, the solution no longer contains these molecules of brown molecules a bromine, which is why it no longer has a bromine color. That's why it is, and we say this, is decolorized. The bromine is decolorized, which means that it's removed of all of its color. We could say it's gone from orange to, what color is this? Clear is not a color. Gray. Cloud is not a color either. Clear is not a color. Colorless. So it goes from orange to colourless. More to follow from the board in just a second. Okay, so we've gone now to our double books and we're just making a few notes with regard to what's happening here. Uh, the title is How Bromine Reacts with Alkanes and Alkenes and we're starting uh, by looking at how uh, they react with alkenes. In fact, bromine is often used to distinguish between alkanes and alkenes and that's due to this sort of vulnerable double bond. So what we need to recognize here is what happens. The vulnerable double bond breaks, and this causes the bromine to react. So the bromine bond also breaks, and then this bromine attaches to here, whilst this bromine attaches then to here. So the material that we're left with looks like that. Now the name that we give to this molecule, you need to know, and it's quite a complex name. So if we think about it and sort of break the response down into a couple of stages, we can see that we would really call this ethane, because of course it contains two carbons and all of this molecule is saturated, only contains single, uh, single carbon to carbon bonds, hence the ane. But it's got bromine in it, so we call it bromo. Ethane. And more than that, we call it dibromoethane because it contains a bromine here and a bromine here, two of them. That's dibromo. And what we also need to recognize is that one of the bromines is positioned on the first carbon, whilst the second bromine is positioned on the second carbon. So therefore, the name of this particular molecule is 1,2-dibromoethane. Now, if we look at the molecular formula of this, obviously what we're starting off with, we're starting off with a substance which has one, two carbons in it, and one, two, three, four hydrogens. We're reacting that in the presence of bromine, which we call Br2, and the products of this are gonna be C2, one, two, H4, one, two, three, four, and Br2. Now, what's really interesting about this team is that we start off with two materials, and we end up with one. Does anybody know what name we give to this type of reaction where we start off with two and we end up with one thing? Any ideas? We call it an addition reaction. An addition reaction. We haven't added anything. We have, we've added bromine to the alkene and that's why it's changed color. No, no, no. We start off with two things and we end up with one. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. So before we look at the chemistry of the alkane, let's put it on the windowsill and see what happens. 
So coming back to the solutions, we can see that both are now colourless. So we're going to look now at alkanes. Uh, as we've said, these react far more slowly, so we'll come back to the results of that experiment a little bit later on in the week. But they do react, they just react really, really slowly. Um, they need sunlight for the reaction to occur, and that's really what happens. So effectively, the sunlight shines down on this bond. Bromine is pretty unstable, uh, it's really susceptible to, uh, to UV light, and as that, that happens, it breaks that bond. Now, in turn, then what happens is this bromine atom, which is highly reactive, uh, it's got a, a, a valent uh, electron, which means that it's not, it's not going to fall out of shell of electrons, reacts with the, 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 the carbon, and what happens is we get a reaction where effectively the bromine replaces the hydrogen. Now we call this a substitution reaction. Much like a substitute in a lacrosse match or in a football match or a rugby match comes off the bench and replaces a player on the pitch. So with that in mind, what we're left with is our chain of carbons, but instead of now having a hydrogen here at the end, we've got a bromine. The other material, of course, that's generated during the course of this reaction is HBr, which is mildly acidic, uh, pretty unpleasant stuff. Put the hydrogens here to make this fuller. So looking at the equation here, putting that bond back in there, we can see here that effectively a substitution reaction has taken place. Substitution. Now let's see if we can have a go at naming this particular molecule. We've named the much harder one in the previous one, 1,2-dibromoethane. Uh, uh, let's see if we can name this. Any suggestions? What is the longest carbon chain? Octane. Say again? It's not octane because it's not got eight carbons. It's four carbons long. Butane, thanks very much Joe, so it's butane. It also contains this, so what name are we going to give to it? Bromo. Bromo butane. Is there just one or two? One. There's just one, so do we need the dye? No, we don't. And where is it positioned? Is it positioned on carbon one, two, three, four, or carbon one, two, three, four? One and four. One and four. We're just going to call it one bromobutane because it's positioned on the first carbon. This is carbon number one, two, three, four. We don't call it one four because, of course, that would suggest that there was one on position one and one on position four. So it's just one bromobutane. Thank you. So uh, now we're going to have a look at these questions. You may have done question one to four already, parts A and B. Uh, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to continue looking at question four, part C, and question five. These are all taken from page 274 in the textbook. I hope you can do them.